Today we're going to look at how to create a screencast using the tool called WeVideo. WeVideo is browser-based editing software, so it works in a Chrome browser and is really easy to use. My favorite part of WeVideo is that you can publish your finished project directly to your Google Drive or you can also upload directly to YouTube. So it's a pretty versatile tool and one that's great to use with kids, although today we're going to look at it from the perspective of creating an instructional video for the families that we serve. Let's go ahead and get started. All right, I'm going to go ahead and click Create New and I'm going to select Video Edit instead of Project. Project is really for longer pieces and Video Edit is perfect for movies in the two to three minute mark. So I'm gonna go ahead and select that. In the user interface, I'm gonna go up to the top left corner where there, th there are these three little lines and I'm gonna click on them to select the menu options and I'm gonna switch my interface over to timeline mode. Timeline mode is just a lot easier to use because it separates all the audio and visual components onto separate tracks. So you can see here I have a video two track, a video one track, and an audio. I'm gonna get rid of that video two because I know I don't really need it. And that leaves me with a video one track and just an audio where I can add some more stuff later. I'm gonna click on the green upload button and that takes me here to the status uh, zone for my uploads. And I'm gonna go ahead and click to upload some footage. I recorded myself on my cell phone earlier and then dropped that file into my drive. I can use that blue button in the center to upload from um, my, my hard drive on my computer, but I'm actually gonna click this little drive button down here in the bottom left because that links with my Google Drive account. So I'm going to locate that folder that I made earlier when I recorded myself at the start of the video. And then inside that folder, I'll find the clip I need. And that's the thing I like about Wii videos. It's super easy to uh, drop in lots of different media. So I'm going to click on my little clip and click import. And once I click the blue button here to go ahead and verify the upload, it gives me a little status bar, which will be orange, and it'll say that it's processing, um, and that bar will turn green when it's complete. But I don't have to babysit it. I can actually close this little X in the top right corner, and I can just send that status bar away, and I can keep working on other elements of my project while I wait for the rest of the media to upload. Um, once I close it, if I want to get back to it, I go to this top right corner where there's the green upload button. I can click on it again and actually I can see now that my upload is complete. So I can get rid of that. And then back on this main interface, this is my media library. And that's where all of the components that I upload appear. So I'm going to go ahead and grab this video and drag it down onto the video one line. It turns green when it's being added at a location that has enough room for the entire clip. I know that at the beginning of this clip, I reached out and I pressed the record button on my phone. And I don't really want to start my actual movie that way. I want to kind of edit that part out. So I'm going to adjust the playhead, which is this blue line, into the perfect position where I can just trim the first part of that video. So wherever the playhead is, wherever the blue line is, that's where my clip is going to split. So I position the blue line and then I click this little pair of scissors and that cuts my one clip into two pieces. And then I can click on the portion I don't want and press the backspace button, and that just gets rid of it. So I'm only left with what was on the right side of that blue line, and that's the good video portion that I wanna keep. I can just scoot that over to the left because I want everything to line up as far left as possible. That's the start of my video. And then I know that at the end of this, I reach out and I press the stop recording section. So I want to go ahead and trim a little off the end as well. I move the blue play head and adjust right where I want the clip to split into two. And then I click the scissors. And this time I'm going to keep what's on the left and get rid of what's on the right. And again, to get rid of something, I just use the scissors to split it into two pieces, click on the portion that I want to go away, and I press the backspace. So now I'm gonna go ahead and grab my screencasted portion 
and bring it down here to follow that live video portion. So there's a lot of research that says seeing a face is a good thing. It helps the viewer connect. So I show that little bit of myself in the beginning and now I can get into the rest of my movie, which is the screencasted portion about how to use Wii Video, which is actually what you're watching right now. All right, for this next section, I'm gonna go ahead and use some of the other tools at the top on this toolbar. I'm gonna to click on text and add some text at the end of my movie. Um, and maybe it's just a little to find out more, go to www.wevideo.com. Um, any pertinent resource that you would wanna share, you can use a text slide. Um, there's some great like introductory text, there's some end credits, there's a lower third portion that you can actually have display while you're talking. Um, any of these are good versatile options and you just drag them on down to add them to uh, your clip. So once they're here, you click the little pencil to be able to edit the text and it brings up this interface where you can go ahead and substitute whatever it is that you want to appear on the screen. All right, and I'm going to go ahead and click the blue button when I'm done. And that will take me back to the editor. To make adjustments to a particular clip, I can click on it once so that it has an orange outline and then click on this little pencil icon that appears. And whenever I do that, it's going to open up the editing resources for each individual clip. So I can transform using these menu options, any of the audio or visual components. I can boost the volume here, I can mute it. If I keep clicking on those little menu items, I could get to filters and all kinds of neat stuff. But we're trying to keep it simple here today. You may want to add a voiceover. So over here on the left, if you click on this little old fashioned microphone, it opens up the voiceover tab. And it's pretty simple. You just click to record and you can actually check that little box so that you can preview in the preview window what your video looks like while you're recording. And then you just click and you start to record. When you're finished, you click stop. And then you will click the green button off to the left. You can actually preview your voiceover right here and you can trash it and make a new attempt if you need to. Um, but when you're all satisfied, you click this green button on the left. And that will add the voiceover to your project. Notice that it says saving to server. So voiceovers are not a good idea when you don't have a very good internet connection. Um, in that situation, I would use a sound recorder instead and then upload those audio files and drop them into your movie. Um, that'll just save you a ton of headaches and a lot of workaround time. So your voiceover track is created automatically when you record within Wii Video. You can add as many different tracks as you want. There's that little plus sign off to the left, kind of in the middle. Um, so you can add as many tracks as you want. But the voiceover one has been added here for us. And then we have this audio one track as well. So we're going to go up here to the music library and click on the music note. And you can click to preview any of these song choices. But you're going to find one that works for you and drag it down here to the audio one track. And magically, you have a soundtrack for your project. The really important thing to remember is that you never want to have your voice drowned out at all by the song. So we've got to turn it way down, way lower than you think it should go, actually, because you, you never want any competition between the narration and the background music. So turn it way down, and then you can turn your narration up if needed. But that needs to be the loudest component. And then once again, you can use your space button to preview your movie project and check the sound. When your project is finished, you're going to click finish, set a title for your video. Hopefully it's something that makes sense to kind of help you out with the naming convention. And then you click OK. If you want to export in 720 HD uh, because we care about the quality. Um, but 480 is essentially just a lower resolution. It just might be hard for us um, and for viewers to see the, the action on the screen if we stick with the 480. So we definitely want to do an HD import for this project. 
All right, we're going to go ahead and click the drive symbol so that it will save the project into our Google Drive. And then we'll go ahead and click this blue button to start exporting. And um, this is, again, where the advantage of WeVideo is that it integrates with Google Drive so that all the student work and all of our work can be saved there. Uh, it takes you to the page where it shows the video status of the rendering. And actually, WeVideo exports two places. It exports to the blue link, which is a, the WeVideo specific link. But then this little progress bar shows you um, the status of the export straight into the Google Drive. So when everything's said and done, you can go into your Google Drive account, grab the URL assigned to that specific file, and then attach that in Google Classroom. Just make sure the sharing permissions are open so that um, the video can be downloaded. And that is it. We video. Super simple to use.